Welcome back to the story of maybe the most famous marriage in Nashville, George Jones and Tammy Wynette. They first got together when country was blowing up, crossing over into the mainstream culture. Some of their biggest hits were about marriage, even when their own was falling apart. We're gonna hold on. We're gonna hold on to each other. The marriage didn't last long, about six years, but they kept producing big hits for decades. Despite death threats, drug problems, and new spouses, they always seemed to find their way back to each other. I got to witness a little of this near the end. Tammy did the voice of Hank Hill's mom on King of the Hill. Don't tell me you're uncomfortable with the thought of me and Gary sleeping in the same room. I didn't have that thought, Mom. You put that thought in my... And I heard from her that George could do a mean Donald Duck under certain conditions. We'll get to that later. Tammy was a beautiful lady, and George was a great man. He just had some demons. You knew when he was messed up when he didn't have that hair sprayed down. That hair would get all over his face, I mean, not everywhere. But when he was straight, he was so particular, he would use a whole can of hairspray. It would be so stiff, I said, George, a bug couldn't even fly on your head. Wayne Oliver was 20 years old when George and Tammy got married and started performing together. He spent much of his career booking their shows. We were playing up in Washington, D.C., and uh, we were headed to Logan, Ohio. And I said, George, let's go. Let's go to the hotel, spend the night, and we'll fly in the morning. He said, no, I want to ride the bus. I said, uh-oh. When he said he wanted to ride the bus and didn't fly, I knew something was going on. So I told the bus driver in the band, I said, don't let him off the bus till you get to Logan, Ohio. So the next morning, all the band members were standing around the bus, and I said, what's wrong? They said, George is gone. I said, what? He said, yeah, we woke up and he was gone. I said, shit, we got this show out here and it's gonna be 25 to 30,000 people. And he said, well, he was walking down that way. So I went down there walking and, and I seen two little ladies out in the front yard. And I said, ma'am, have y'all seen George Jones? She said, well, he just left. Nicest man in the world. In fact, we had two bottles of wine. I said, what? She said, yeah, I said, he come by and he was thirsty. And I said, can you tell me where he went? She said, well, he was gonna go right down here at the cab stand. I said, thank you very much. So I went down there and the cab driver said, yeah. I said, George got in the cab about an hour ago, said he's headed to Nashville. I said, holy shit, George is gone. I said, I don't know what we're gonna do. And you've seen those people have been out there all day drinking. And we'd seen some pretty nice fights. And I said, look, we got a little problem. I said, George is gone. And it was a DJ standing over on the other side. He heard me say that. And he went up on the stage and said, George Jones is gone. He's not going to be a show. And I said, damn it. People were turning the stages down. They were throwing rocks at the bus, cutting the tires on the bus. Lucky I had a 38 with me in my briefcase. And just happened, a lot of Hell's Angels had come to the show. And I recognized one of them. And I motioned for him to come over. And he come to the side of the bus. I said, Spook, you got to get our ass out of here. They're going to kill us. He come over on the motorcycles. We went out in there on the ramps. The tires had come off. 